The Duchess of Sussex opted for another dress recycled from her pregnancy wardrobe today as she arrived at the British High Commission in Cape Town with Prince Harry. Meghan, 38, wore the same 1080 pounds floor length gown she chose for the fourth day of her official visit to Australia last year to attend a youth reception at the High Commissioner's residence this evening. She donned the khaki maxi, designed by Melbourne based Martin Grant, on a walkabout on Bondi Beach soon after announcing she was pregnant in October 2018. It is not the first reused outfit she has sported on her and Harry's Africa trip. Yesterday she stepped out in the same blue shirt dress she wore in Tonga last October while still pregnant with baby Archie. Earlier today she revealed her transition to motherhood has been easy as four-month-old Archie has been a wonderful baby. The versatile loose-fitting 525 pounds Veronica Beard carry dress she wore at the District 6 Museum yesterday ties at the waist, while the striped maxi from this evening's event is also suitable for maternity wear. This evening she beamed as she arrived hand-in-hand -hand with her husband, 35, while their son Archie, 4 months, remained with his nanny. An anonymous guest said Meghan told of the family's flight over, they said it was the longest flight they have taken with Archie. She slept with one eye open, but he was very good. They were later pictured laughing and joking with prominent South African disability and women's rights activist Marlene Leroux before Harry was greeted with a hug from Desmond Tutu's daughter, Thandke Tutu Ksash. She said he is looking forward to seeing the royal couple tomorrow and said of his health, he is doing okay. He is up and down. M's Tutu Ksash added, they were saying that they were happy to be here and looking forward to meeting my father tomorrow and hopefully they will have some time for conversation. As crowds gathered at the High Commissioner's residence, Harry gave a speech detailing his and Meghan's visit to the township known as South Africa's murder capital yesterday. He said, yesterday was quite remarkable in Nyanga. One of the things that stood out the most, as it does in a lot of the visits that we do around the world, especially within the Commonwealth, is the power of the youth, and what the young people are able to do to change the conversation, to be able to stand up for the things that really matter to them. The more of us that can listen to them, and help amplify that voice and give them a platform, it will not only help them, it will also help us as well. Fashion designer Gavin Roger said Meghan spoke about guest editing Vogue, she said it was like having twins, it was a huge amount of work. Earlier in the day Meghan wore a headscarf to visit South Africa's oldest mosque. To mark Heritage Day, a public holiday in South Africa when the nation celebrates its culture, diversity and traditions, the Sussexes paid a visit to the historic Hallwell Mosque in Bocap, Cape Town. Meghan changed out of her casual clothes and covered her head with a scarf and wore a floor-length gown, and even helped a lady with her headscarf once inside the mosque. Meghan Markle is heading back to her royal closet, again. The Duchess of Sussex and Prince Harry capped off their busy second day in South Africa at the British High Commissioner's residence for a reception celebrating young people. They met a cross-section of inspiring opinion formers and young future leaders, underlining the rich and diverse nature of the UK's modern partnership with South Africa. For the occasion, Meghan switched into her third outfit change of the day, a striped maxi dress by Martin Grant. She accessorized the look with black porcelain earrings from local South African jeweler Nina Bosch. She previously wore the ensemble in October 2018 during the couple's royal tour of Australia, when they went barefoot on Bondi Beach to meet a local surfing community group dedicated to raising awareness for mental health and well-being in an engaging way. Meghan was pregnant with son Archie at the time and memorably cradled her tiny baby bump over the dress for the first time. Instead of pulling her hair back into a low ponytail as she did for their beach day in Australia last year, Meghan opted to wear her hair loose on Tuesday. This is the second day in a row that Meghan has recycled a dress from last year's royal tour. On Monday, she arrived at the District 6 Museum wearing a sky blue dress featuring a wrap waist and button the details down the front. Meghan previously wore the casual chic ensemble during the couple's visit to Tonga's Tupu College. Harry took over the role of Commonwealth Youth Ambassador from the Queen in April 2018. He and Meghan see the Commonwealth as taking an important role in their working life. 
In a speech given in January, the prince said, Nearly 12 months into the job, I can honestly say I feel more passionate than ever about the huge opportunity we have here, to empower young people across the Commonwealth, you who are here in this room today, and the millions around the world who are part of this global collective of change makers. Continued Harry, some may say it's our responsibility, but I see it as our privilege, to equip you with the tools and the platform you need, to continue your cause-driven work at the highest level, driving positive and effective change. The Commonwealth represents a global network of 53 countries and almost 2.4 billion people, a third of the world's population, of whom 60% are under 30 years old. Meghan and Harry's tour of Africa marks their first royal tour with their son, Archie, who was born on May 6. Meghan will join Harry on visits in South Africa before he heads off solo for engagements in Botswana, Angola, and Malawi.